ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of the Economic Times Cutting Dry Stories, an initiative by ETH. I'm your host, Dimple Bajwa, and I bring to you conversations with business leaders where we discuss their professional and personal journeys, hobbies, career experiences, sources of inspiration, among other engaging topics over a cup of chai. Cutting Child Stories is a platform that identifies leaders and brings out their traits, routines, and thought processes that makes these leaders stand out in the industry across different verticals and sectors. And today I have been joined by a very special guest, an IT leader who has the ability to transform organizations with a demonstrated history of working in multiple industries, regions, and multinational teams. Without further ado, let me now welcome Mr. Neeraj Agnihotri, Global Lead Application Delivery, Mondelez International. Thank you for joining us, Mr. N Mr. Agnihotri. Thank you, Dimple. Thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure and honor to be on this show. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to this conversation. It's great. Uh, I, just, I just wish I could have attended one probably 30 years back in my career. <laughs> uh, so, sir, uh, you have... Uh, you started working at Arvind Mills and then you moved to uh, Mahindra Consultancy, uh, Consulting Limited and then you worked with the likes of uh, Qatar Petroleum and Capgemini and now at uh, you're working with Mondelez International. You seem to have come a long way in your career and uh, you of course are a leader in your domain. I would start by asking you to take us through your career journey. How has it been for you? You have uh, How have you grown all these years? You know, it would be great for us to hear you talk about how it started and how you hit the right call to be where you are today and uh, also emphasize on how it is going. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, career growth per se is a very subjective term. Uh, we should uh, take it with that pinch of salt that, uh, you know, career growth would mean different things to different people. Uh, I'm quite, uh, you know, fortunate to have uh, grown through multiple organizations and, uh, you know, uh, have the ability to uh, go through various cultures as part of my uh, career journey. And uh, that's, I think, is the most uh, interesting thing about uh, my career journey. And it's a journey, you know, I, I will probably break into uh, three broader uh, stages. Uh, the first stage was uh, more when, you know, as a teenager, I was learning and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I come from a very modest uh, Maharashtrian background with my father working as a uh, state uh, government official and uh, he was always moving from places to places which kind of exposed me to uh, different cities and uh, you know different trends and different groups and different localities as part of my early days uh, of schooling and college and uh, it it taught me that uh, you know you need to have the desire to grow uh, you need to have that uh, hunger in your belly all the time that uh, you want to do something because coming from a modest background it uh, and you know having exposure to the early part of the struggle it always made me realize that okay uh, you can't just uh, you know stand uh, uh, stagnated you know that that's not life you have to keep moving and uh, that that was the biggest uh, you know part of that phase the second phase was where i actually started working as a professional and uh, this is where, you know, I started working with Arvind Mills and uh, uh, Mahindra Consulting. I got to work with people, uh, you know, at various level. I was managing actually uh, SAP support for uh, entire NIPS business division that time for Arvind. And, uh, you know, it just exposed me to, to the entire division's uh, business, uh, which was great. As, as an early part of career, I think everyone should look at how you get a more wider experience. Uh, you know, they, they say that, uh, you know, be, do you want to be a, a small fish in a big pond or big fish in a small pond, right? So uh, you should always look at that from uh, experiences that you want to make, the exposure that you want to get, because more wider exposure you get in early part of your career, the quicker is your journey and accelerated journey. So uh, I am quite fortunate to, you know, have got that in early part of my career. And uh, it just also helped me to kind of move through industries. When I came to Mahindra Consulting, I just got exposure to uh, so many industries, metal, refinery, pharma, uh, automobile, uh, you know, city council. I worked for a city council in South Africa. So I, I feel like, you know, going through those uh, variety of experiences made a lot of difference. Uh, what it taught me is, you know, knowledge is the power. And 
uh, probably what you also need to keep uh, in mind is you need to add variety in your knowledge because variety is like that uh, you know spice in your food it add punch to your life so it add punch to your knowledge you are able to differentiate your thoughts your point of views as you kind of bring that diversity in your experience so i i'm quite fortunate with that i think in the third phase of my career journey i would say this is where i started growing as a leader from capgemini monolis got exposed to work in various transformation programs and uh, got a very good uh, you know uh, visibility around how leaders think what is the business outcome that they want to drive how uh, the strategies are formed why the strategies are so difficult to realize you know it requires working with a lot of people convincing them to align to your objectives and uh, it it just taught me in a way that you have to be very humble you have to be grounded you have to be genuine uh, you have to be yourself in all the uh, areas of uh, you know your work life and uh, in in that process of course uh, you make good experiences i think what what overall i would sum it up is uh, there are three l's in the career one is a learning another is a leading and third is a leaping uh, and and you may you may leap very occasionally it's not leaping won't happen that easily it comes you know at the right point in time probably it is you know as per your destiny right. uh, leading is something which is in your hand you can take the control and you can decide when you want to lead while you are making some experiences uh, but learning is inevitable in every experiences <laughs> learning is always happening at the moment you see learning is not happening you should start looking for a different role because that's where you are stagnated and you're not really moving forward so that's in short about my career journey and what i learned through it well that's quite interesting uh, so you talked about these three phases like <clears throat> from how you started to how you grew and how you got visibility also you talked about the three l's of course so <clears throat> here i would want you to share us uh, share with us you know if at any time you suffered failures you know which have only helped you uh, you know grow and learn more and better so, because you know it, it is failure that uh, makes or breaks a person so i would understand from you how how have you dealt with failures if you've ever faced any in your life so so true right and I, I think anyone will be lying if he's saying that he hasn't faced a failure in his life. So uh, I, I faced a lot of failures, and the outlook towards failure should be more like, uh, you know, what uh, outlook a warrior will have toward uh, his or her wounds, right? You show them with pride that look, this is what I suffered, this is what happened in that war, and you know, this is the result. I still lived out of it. Yeah, right. that's that's the proud moment for a warrior, and uh, that's the symbol of his failure as well. But he shows that with pride, right? And this is the outlook we should adopt, I think, to our failures. Uh, I I think one failure that I might uh, you know like to share was a very early part of my career where I was uh, you know working with Arvinds. I joined Mahindra Consulting. It was my very first break in the consulting industry, so to say. Right. Uh, i was coming back to mumbai i was very excited and uh, two two months down the line after joining the company i i didn't knew much about consulting that time that you know the billability and all is so important and i realized that okay i'm not doing anything and one day my boss asked me to wait in the evening and he took a good class of me saying so what are you doing you i, I can't make you believable anywhere i didn't realize that it is my onus to make my own uh, you know believability happen as well uh, and and that was a like a big eye opener i would say uh, on that evening i felt like you know i have failed and i i don't know why i joined consulting in the first place etc etc but then there were some good friends thank god uh, they asked me to believe in myself and uh, you know i the next day i went back i said that okay let me let me look at it as if you know it is my problem and i have to solve it and this is where i got proactive uh, soon i you know got to know about some people uh, some senior person actually working on a project uh, you know being absent for next two three weeks and uh, i realized this is my opportunity and uh, you know i i volunteer for kind of uh, you know putting my uh, myself in that position for uh, two three weeks i made a lot of learning and all and i placed myself and 
it worked out i mean after that i don't think i ever had to worry about believability in my life any time uh, i i think what is what is important in this is you know we are the same person who uh, you know who were crawling and not standing and failing while we try to stand right every one of us right but we made that try every time every time we failed we decided to stand up and still you know made that try till we stand up and not just stand up but then walk and run as well so uh, we are the same person we just have to believe in ourselves every one of us that we have it in us and uh, we can make it happen i think failure is part of life but uh, you know if you stand up to it uh, there is nothing such like a failure you can be proud of it as well right right i totally agree with that uh, okay now uh, let me take you back to your school and college days you know where you uh, learn your early uh, life lessons can you recall of your early days in school or maybe in college or any lessons you know that you learned during your childhood or youth that have stayed with you till date till date i i i think childhood and uh, college days are very special for everyone i i must say uh you know i'm i'm very fortunate that uh, i i was i kind of did my engineering from vijayti and uh, through the schooling i moved from cities to cities but then uh while in vijayti of course i was uh, staying in hostel and uh, those uh, who have stayed in hostel or would have seen probably some of the movies like the idiot and chichore would appreciate the value of staying in hostel as well right. it takes you through a lot of life lessons It and uh, you know those life lessons are uh, i mean they they are difficult to measure in terms of you can't put a value on it and you make some life long long friends i'm very fortunate that i made a lot of good friends and uh, uh, we call it as a fundu friend group as such but the the life lesson that you know i want to probably share is something which happened uh, in the second year of my engineering uh, this is when uh, you know my one of my you know uh hods uh, of uh, the department uh, he was teaching one of the subject and uh, unfortunately one of the routine exam i was not well and i failed in that exam and uh, while handing over the paper he said uh, agniyotri this was not expected from you and till that time to be honest i never thought that the hod knows me knows me by my name and you know it was such a big realization oh my god hod knows me by my name and he called me by my name in front of the entire class and and that just opened my eyes because i felt that time that you know it it is not only you right uh, your development and your uh, goodwill is something you know you should do good is not just your expectation but it's a expectation of people around you who think about you who invest in you and it just makes you so responsible about you know whatever you want to do in your life and i think that was a big lesson because after that i always felt like you know i'm not doing something just for myself uh, or just because i want it but it is because many other people in the society in my friend circle in my family around me my colleagues uh, you know my organization everyone expect me to do well not just for myself uh, not just for themselves but also for myself and uh, it's it's a great realization and it just made me a bit more responsible i would say uh, which kind of stayed after that and uh, of course uh, you know i i learned also that uh, you should know people by their name at the end of the day it makes a lot of difference right right <clears throat> you mentioned about your hod earlier you also mentioned about uh, you know going places with your father i just want to know if if you know you saw a mentor in any of these people you know is some you know the kind of qualities that you saw in these people that you've inherited from them i i think uh, you know there it's it's very hard to say that you know one person is my mentor and uh, you know there it there is so uh, difficulties in making someone a role model because uh, you know unfortunately if you don't know about much about that person then that role model concept starts failing and then your belief in that person also starts failing right uh, i think many of my teachers were my early life mentors and uh, you know there was a, a, a teacher a class teacher in my early life uh, during schooling uh, he was my big mentor uh, i used to even play chess with him at times so you know i still remember this i think what happens is 
uh, you know, some of this mentorship also kind of, uh, you know, changes your needs for mentorship also changes through your life. And you should realize that, that uh, probably somebody who was a good mentor for you, uh, you know, two years back, probably he or she is not the same good mentor for you, probably for your next phase of journey. And you should probably form a more like a group of mentors, right? Or, uh, uh, you know, extended uh, list of mentors, uh, basically, with whom you want to work. And, uh, uh, and, and also, you know, good thing about mentoring is, you should mentor yourself as well because a lot you learn when you're doing reverse mentoring because when you are mentoring somebody you realize this quite a few things which probably you haven't focused uh, earlier in your life and then you start thinking about it and uh, you know it makes a lot of difference in the way you uh, approach things right right uh, since we're already talking about mentoring and uh, role models uh, of course we know that you're a great leader and you're passionate about uh, people development and value creation in every single task that uh, you do and uh, you like leading as a team uh, i would like to understand uh, from your i would like to understand your leadership qualities and the qualities you know that you would want your team or you know others to inherit from you any one quality or qualities that you would want to talk about here yeah i think what others should inherit it is you know probably subjective and uh, again you know i will leave it for everyone but then uh, i i completely believe in you know uh, value creation is the main task of leadership and no value creation can happen without people development in fact value creation and people development are two sides of the same coin and as a leader you should just embrace them you if you have to if you believe that as a leader you will do the same thing tomorrow right then you're wrong because you have to bring change and you have to create value and in order to create value you have to embrace the change you have to sell the change you have to be part of that change yourself as well and in order to make a broader team part of that change you need to make sure that the you know the team the people are developing along with you uh, so people development that way is quite interlinked with the, you know, change and value creation and every leader, uh, it's a leadership job. It's, it's not anybody's else uh, job. Of course, I strongly believe that people development, I should be more concerned about my development than anybody else. But then in order to create value and make the change happen, uh, people development uh, uh, should be one of the top priority for any leader. Right, right. Uh, all right. Uh, so my last question, you uh, will give us a deeper uh, sort of insight in your uh, into your personal side. I would now like to know about the fun and family activities that you like to indulge in, uh, maybe post work, like in the evenings or maybe on holidays or weekends. What are the recreational activities that you like to do and how do you maintain a balance between your personal and professional life? I, I think the pandemic has taught, taught us to be <laughs> Uh, you right. know, attentive to our health, right? And uh, mental, okay. mental and physical health both matters. Uh, I'm actually, uh, me and my wife have actually taken formal education in yoga. So we both hold a yoga diploma, a yoga teacher's diploma. Wow. So yoga acts as a big, uh, uh, big, uh, you know, uh, area for us to kind of, you know, uh, help ourselves uh, manage that balance. And uh, with kids, of course, you know, I have two sons and uh, I like to play new games. And one of the good things that I like is I invent games with them. So, you know, it's, it's like, it's a good thing. It's more creative than just playing a game. You invent right. a new game, you know. So, uh, I would like you to go to Oreo Pledge, uh, Play Pledge. Uh, it's, it has some great, uh, uh, you know, uh, examples of how you can do things uh, differently with your family and kids and all. And uh, yeah, that's uh, badminton, playing and inventing new games, uh, exploring, going for a picnic. Uh, you know, I, I like to visit historical monuments. I feel like our historical monuments are so much that we can help our next generation to learn from. And uh, you know, usually I choose picnic spots considering, you know, what I want to share with my kids while I go there. So yeah, that's, that's uh, my personal side. That's quite interesting. And uh, with that, we come to the end of this Cutting Chai interview. It was great interacting with you, Mr. Agnihotri. Thank you for answering all my questions. We got some really good insights into your personal and professional journey today. It was truly an amazing interaction with you.